so guys it's a sunday here i just finished watching one division although i'm in the philippines we don't have disney plus here it's up for you to decide how i got one division in my country <laughs> okay so this is other dffoo sundays or something and let's talk about one division let's talk about one division episodes one to five and my take on the uh, series so far so uh, if everyone was living under a rock lately one division is a Disney Plus original series starring Wanda and The Vision. It is now the starting point of Marvel Cinematic Universe Phase 4. It is based on The Vision and Scarlet Witch comic book. And I'm sharing this to you because I'm an avid uh, Marvel supporter. I think Marvel is better than DC. And people who said that DC TV shows are better have not watched one division okay so in retrospect let's uh talk about episode one first episode one uh it's the uh, first episode of course uh it was oh, wait what am i doing nothing now ah i misclick uh it was set in the 1950s i think and when I booted out the video in VLC, I adjusted it to the best fit. I was shocked it wasn't uh, 1080p, but I got it. It's in black and white. So if it's in the 50, they are adopting the television format in the era that it was released. So in the 50s, it was black and white. So there. Uh, it starts up with Wanda and the Vision. Assuming they got married, but they don't know if they were married. Hell, there is it at spot there. Uh, it was August twenty three. There was a heart, and they don't know what the fuck that is, that is. And furthermore, uh, to prove a point, uh, Wanda is your typical housewife. Okay. And Vision is a typical man of the house, the head of the table. Shout out Roman Reigns. Now, in this episode, it's like Wanda becoming accustomed to being a housewife. And then Vision, being a human computer that is, is be helping the company being productive AF. So that there's that. He was so productive, I think, that his boss... Wants him to invite himself to a dinner along with his wife in his in Vision's household, and that's where the trope of the series is going to be come they come before the storm, and then there's the comedy thing and, that, and there's going to be some freaky freaky shit that's going to happen. So, the comedy skit is like uh. Them showcasing their powers in the most subtle way possible. So in episode 1, uh, Wanda showcased her power by buying the house. But that's on the intro. And mainly when they want to cook dinner. Which ended up being breakfast. Because of course it is. Of course the avenger that has reality warping powers cannot cook breakfast i mean dinner she cannot cook a steak or a lobster dinner and she but she has reality warping powers. sure sure and the the trope is uh vision is trying to prevent the hearts i think that it's what they called to see wanda's powers and in the dinner itself the vision's boss choke almost choked to death but had to use his face powers to save the life of his boss 
in the end, uh, Wanda and Vision, Wanda conjures up two wedding rings, and they decide it's their anniversary. But still, the freaky freaky shit here is, why? Why are they even there? So, that's the whole story, and it ends with someone watching them. So, hindsight is 2020, without any retrospect, you assume that the person watching them is the villain, I get it. And, yeah. And the commercial here, each episode has a commercial, by the way. The commercial here is the Stark Toaster 2000. And I believe when I what I read on the internet is that each commercial represents something in something that happened in Wanda's life. So the toaster is a representation of the bomb that killed Wanda's parents. And the bomb was made by Stark Industries. Remember the uh, Age of Ultron quote? We waited for two days for Tony Stark to kill us. That's the thing. So there. So episode one is a setup to what's gonna be the tone of the series so far. Let's head up to episode two. Episode two, they have a brand new intro. I like the intro. It reminds me of the Jetsons. It like it's set in the 60s, so it's still black and white. And this one is like a it's a slow transition to what's going to become of episode three. So episode two is there's gonna be a car a what's that? There was this scene where they were split in two beds and then they become one bed because magic and then they found this helicopter drone that is in color which means it came from the outside but it wasn't implied yet so that's there's that and then there's the uh, county fair that vision and scarlet witch are going to perform as as the magicians Glamour and Illusion. Uh, Elizabeth Olsen is hot in that scene, by the way. Her clothes is hot AF. But that's not the point there. Uh, so the comedy trope there is the magic show because on the way to the county fair, uh, Vision swallowed the gum for some reason and it jammed his machine. So they rope the synthesoid that, Andre- that Ultron created is vulnerable to gum makes sense and then Wanda's arc there is she wants to be a part of this rotary club I think and then there's this evil lady thing that kind of intimidates Wanda so I'll give my thoughts on that in the end when I re- of this review of episode 2 so the freaky freaky shit here is they destroy the powers they try to hide Wanda tries to hide her powers in plain sight while in the same time, Vision is malfunctioning due to the gum. So you see this episode, Vision is the magician, not Wanda. So, getting fucked up before the county fair is a problem, right? So there. This also introduced us to Geraldine, who will be have a huge role in episode 3. And the series, this episode ends... With Wanda and Vision getting out on their own terms, like they have secluded their secret successfully, I think. And then the evil girl, evil Rotary Club leader, awards them the most comedic show. And then in the end, there's a beekeeper that came out of the sewers. That's fine, okay. So what I think about this is we're slowly getting the grasp that this isn't the normal trope and it will be something of a mystery. Why it, why was the helicopter there in color while they are in black and white? And why did the series end in color? And why is it a sitcom? So there. So... For me, I think uh, the gir- the evil girl is the main villain, I think. So I'll I'll just 
say what I think in the end of the review. Next episode, episode 3. I mean, okay, okay. I forgot about the commercial. The commercial here is the Hydra Watch. And based on the internet, it's a metaphor on when the time uh, Strucker experimented on the twins in Winter Soldier. So, Strucker Watch. I don't know why it was the watch, but I guess it is. So, episode 3. Episode 3 is now in color, but it's still in the CRT aspect ratio. So, that bugs me a bit. And this one introduces Wanda as a pregnant woman. She's pregnant. Apparently, it seems like they had sex in episode 2 in the bed scene where... Wanda come by the two beds. So Wanda is pregnant and the trope here is she's trying to give birth but every time she pushes the kids or she's in labor, her powers magnified and becomes chaos. So there's that. So that's the uh, freaky freaky shit here. And along the three episodes, there is a special neighbor called Agnes. So... Episode 1, Agnes is there, is the helpful neighbor. Episode 2, Agnes is Wanda's best friend in the town. The town is called Westview, by the way. And in episode 3, Wanda, uh, Agnes, it doesn't play the closer role. That role went to Geraldine. Wanda is, uh, Agnes is seen outside as a neighbor gossiping with, I assume... Her husband. Okay. So this is where things lead to, I think, that the clue that Agnes hinted that Geraldine is is an outsider because Geraldine doesn't have, have a house inside Westview and she just arrived in Westview. So there. And it and it ends with Wanda giving birth to twins, just like in the comics, with Geraldine being her nurse. But Wanda realizes that Geraldine is an outsider of the ta- town, doesn't belong in the town, because Geraldine, for some reason, regained her consciousness when Wanda mentioned her deceased brother Pietro. And then Wanda begins to question, why did you know? That why did you know Pietro? Why did she know Pietro was killed by Ultron? And then Geraldine got expelled out of the town. The commercial here is Hydra Soak. I didn't watch Agent of Shield, so I so I didn't understand the reference. But it seems that Hydra has a soap, a ma- a brainwashing soap, and then there's a tagline. Unleash the goddess within. So I guess that's Wanda. She's the uh, goddess within. And Hydra unleash it. When they realize her full potential. Next. Uh, So everything that happened in episodes 1, 2, and 3. Were explained in episode 4. So, episode 4, we are introduced to the supposedly re, to the supposedly explanation on how the uh, snap or the blip works. So, we got Geraldine, whose, init- whose real identity is Monica Rambeau. You know, the kid in Captain Marvel? So, she get resurrected... She recom- recomposed from the blip, from the dust, from Thanos. And she woke up in the hospital room, which she assumed is from her mother, Maria Rambo. She woke up, she asked everything, and she realized she was been missing for five years. Her mother died three years ago. And she missed it. She missed everything. Imagine being the daughter and missing your mother's death. That's kind of sad. And then she rushed over to the sword head- headquarters so sword is introduced here and we got the 
evil douchebag boss explain to Rambo what happened and she got an assignment on investigating the a missing person and then it led to the town of Westview New Jersey which is uh, explained as it is not a real town because the sheriff that responded on the event is from Eastview and we get a reintroduction from the FBI agent from Ant-Man so this is not a typical episodic thing of WandaVision where we explore the decades this is more of a summary so I consider this as a mid-season finale of WandaVision if you get what I mean and then from there, there they have established tents a base camp around the field of Westview and then Westview is like being surrounded by searchlights like that and I mean before that Monica got it got sucked in when she sent the drone which explains why the drone was in color and then Monica got sucked in because she touched the field that's how she became Geraldine and then the base camp was established experts from different fields have arrived and we got a reintroduction to the girl that I had a crush for on Thor and she's finally back yeah I had a crush on Darcy I'm not gonna lie I think she's hotter than Jane and I'm glad she's a daughter she's play she's playing a major role in one division there's that and then here we get some explanation like the beekeeper that exited the manhole in episode 2 was in fact a sword agent being warped into the field of Westview so when you were in Westview there's no way out I think and then how Geraldine or rather Monica Rambeau became expelled because Wanda expelled her using her powers and the explanation that it is broadcast because Wanda is emitting broadcast frequencies along with the high degree of cosmic rays around the paranormal field. So, when you, in engineering, if you have broadcast frequencies, you can try to read it. And Darcy read this by asking for a old television, not flat. And this became a broadcast TV signal in which they see the sitcom of One Division. So the end of episode one, where I said there is someone watching, that is Darcy in the Sword Headquarters, Sword Base Camp around Westview. And the end of it explains that the that Monica Rambeau was expelled in Westview via Wanda's powers. It's a ni nice touch. One. Uh, Monica got expelled and she got hit to three walls and the fourth wall is the force field separating the real world to the one division world the west view and it's like breaking the fourth wall so it's a nice touch it's a nice trivia it's a nice reference to the fourth wall so it's established that the west that Westview is a makeshift town by Wanda. The people there are mind-controlled denizens by Wanda. And once you're in, you can't get out and you're subjected to Wanda's spell. So this is, I consider this as the mid-season finale because it's like how you put it uh, explaining the past episodes okay then we go to episode 5 so episode 5 this is 1970 1980s episode 70, sorry. okay 1980s theme so we got uh, they're in color they have bullshit 80s hair Agatha is like a gym instructor Wanda is trying to calm the babies down but she can't for some reason she can't use their spell on them and the babies can age on their own power so 
I don't know which of the twins is weakened, but I'm pre- calling both Wiccan. So Wiccan age quickly to five years old. They found a dog. The dog's name is Sparky. Sparky is the name of Vision's dog in the comics, the Vision family, I think. And then Wanda said, "Yeah, they should be ten or older to get a pet." So what Wiccan did is, the boys, the twins did is, they advanced to, advanced to 10 years older. And what is the freaky thing about is, Agatha doesn't mind, Agatha, Agnes, Agatha, Agnes doesn't mind that the boys age in advance, which is freaky. And there's also the time there where Agnes really asked, should I redo the script again? So that implies something that, Agnes is in all this thing, in my opinion. And then we got to the real world again, and then there's a, there's a briefing explaining the whole situation and uh, reveal that Wanda took the Vision's dead body and then reanimated it. Hence the freaky scene in episode 4 where Vision was a corpse. So there. This is also implied that Wanda can alter the reality inside the field, which is now referred to as the Hex, because it's shaped as a hexagon, hexagon being a recurring theme in WandaVision, and Hex is the po- the source of, it's like the power of Wanda in the show, in the comics, I mean. So they, there's a drone that raided Wanda, the douchebag director of Sword wanted her dead, so... He wants the drone to shoot her. Wanda is too powerful. Wanda showed up like a boss outside the field for the first time, threatens it, warns them this will be the last time they spare them. And then mind controls the sword soldiers aiming their guns towards the douchebag boss. I wish I wish she would have shoot it because I hate the boss so bad. I hate him so bad. Monica tries to reason with Wanda, but Wanda said the line she already has everything inside the paranormal field. So, yeah. So, that's the reveal. Wanda was in all this, but is she really all in this or is someone controlling her to do this? By the way, the commercial here is the Lagos tissue paper. Where, if you recall back to Captain America Civil War, Lagos is the place where Wanda killed innocents with the explosion, accidental explosion, and the Lagos commercial is treating the accidental spillage with the tissue paper branded Lagos. And the water there, the spill there, is colored red, which implies blood. So, yeah. So, episode 5 ends with the, uh, with Quicksilver returning, but it's not Aaron Johnson, I think his name. Yeah, the Quicksilver who is actually slow. But the but the return of X-Men's superior Quicksilver, Evan Peters. So Evan Peters is the Pietro of this timeline. And then Darcy said, Oh, she recasted Pietro? Like that. So my thoughts on the series. And my theory. So I keep mentioning Agatha accidentally in the series because I think Agnes is Agatha Harkness in the comics. Hence Agnes. Agatha Harkness. So if you don't know, Agatha Harkness is a witch. I think being in that uh, background, she's in all this. And then I think Mephisto is the evil mayor rotary leader lady in episode 2. Because I haven't seen her ever since episode 2. So either the two of them are in on this operation. I don't know. Episode 6 is on Friday. So there's that. I assume it will be a 90s theme ep- uh, ep- episode. And then two thousand, and then episode 7 will be 2000. Then episode 8 will be the season finale of this. So my initial question is here is. If Wanda is the root of all evil on this, is the established villain, then why does she need to broadcast her plot 
to the world to see. She doesn't have to emit out broadcast frequencies. It seems that in her subconscious, she's still sane and she wants the world to tell that she's in trouble, that Vision is in trouble. I mean, Vision is starting to regain some uh, dignity, some morality in episode 5 where he stood up against Wanda asking her, what is this realm? Why doesn't he remember anything before WandaVision? And then, I believe that uh, they, uh, Disney, Marvel is pushing Wanda as a villain so hard that she will not be the villain in the end. But I rest my case. So, all in all, WandaVision is an intriguing, bold series by Disney. Disney Plus. And everyone should try to see it. And, uh, okay, that's my take. It's a good series. It's a phenomenal start to Phase 4 of the MCU. It's a shame that we need Disney Plus to cover the whole Phase 4 now. So there's that. At least we got some quote-unquote ways to watch it, right? Okay. So, leave in the comments what you thought. Uh, if I got something right, what are your theory? I don't know if you will see this video because it's so long. And peace out. Bye-bye.